I love the simple white transition effect. There's so much you can do with it. And in this video, you'll not only learn how to make this transition very quickly, but also how to make great practical creative use with it by combining it with other elements like reveals, overlays, text slides, talking head clips, and motion backgrounds. Let's dive in. Hey, it's Gord here. Welcome. If it's your first time here and it's your passion to make great videos, become a ninja at video editing and learn more tips on how to succeed with video and marketing on YouTube, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss a thing. Okay, so let's see how this basic wipe transition looks. And then we're going to talk about how we put it together very quickly. See how nice and smooth that was? If we just look at the anatomy of this, there's basically one rectangular shape in here, and it's uh, copied three times. There's an animation, as you can see, also used in each one, and we had a sound effect, and it was just so smooth, simple, and elegant. So how did we put this together? Well, I'm just going to deconstruct here by trying to build in parallel to show you how quick this was. I'm going to put this little shape trend, uh, piece here, the blue one, and, you know, by the way, we're using my colors here from my branding thing. So there's blue, white, and gray. And this shape, you know, literally just, I'm just showing you here. I'm just going to zoom out so that we can appreciate it a little better. Come to the shape. So you can see there's the blue shape here. And if you notice, um, it's on a, it was on a 65 uh, degree Z axis rotation so that we can have an angle through the swipe and it started out with a beginning keyframe value uh, uh, position here and then for the end keyframe we wanted to get across the other side so what we wanted to be careful about when we were putting the shape on was to be sure that it was wide enough and tall enough that when we swiped across to go from the beginning to end keyframe that it covered the full screen in the movement Okay, so that did so very nicely, but now we want to, you know, come back to the beginning and we want to, you know, have a white and a gray one as well. So all we have to do is just copy, copy this, this one, paste it in, bring it back here. Now, before we change the color, you got to be mindful that this attribute is turned on here, this property, which relates to the, um, animations so to ensure that the color will stay consistent across the keyframe movement from start to end so you know just be sure that that's on that is and now so we replicated that and if you think about it the begin frame and the end keyframe are the same we just want the second one to be a color white and lag slightly behind so what we do is we're going to go in here and we're going to change the color to white for the uh the actual shape and the outline. And then as you can see in the finished version, we just delayed or lengthened the, uh, the timing of the animation. Okay. So when we do that, whoops, when we do that, you can see how there it is. The second rectangle comes in behind and then it will get at its end keyframe into the exact same position. So you can see the animation path from the beginning to the end is the same for all of them. They just arrive, you know, one after the other based on the length of the, uh, the keyframe set from, for the start and end. Now let's add in our last color. So we're going to copy the, the white one and we're going to paste and let's just align this up and we want this one to be, to be gray. So again, we're going to come back here and we're going to choose the gray one from my branding theme and Again, this one needs to arrive a little later, as you can see in the finished product here on this side. So now when we go across, look at that, the blue, the white, and the gray swipes across. See how easy that was with just one simple shape replicated and extending out the lengths of, of the animations. So I just, you know, wanted to share that with you. You know, it's just one simple animation path and, and, you're, and you're done. So we delete that. And I just wanted to say that we have a sound effect here now. And what I'd like to do is when I'm finished, take all of those elements and add them to the library. And you just put a name in and click and add it to your um, library. In my case, I have my Gord Eisman branded assets. 
going to cancel there because I've already added it and just showing you here it is. I called it white transition. And there we are. That's the first example. Now we're going to, you know, dive in and look at some more examples that uh, evolve this a little. Before going to the next example, I just want to mention two quick, quick things that I, I overlooked. One was that at the end of each of these animations, if you right mouse click, you have the opportunity to change the easing. And if you wanted something faster, you could do spring or exponential. And the reality is though, that if you change or play with these, you're going to get sort of like unpredictable results and you'll have to, you know, tinker around a lot with the length of these different animations to make sure that you get, you know, that nice smooth coverage where there's no gaps. And I leave it at, in, at the auto setting for easing. Just makes things a lot easier. The other item was that um, the animation, just in case <laughs> you didn't know, um, I'm going to delete that. It's just a matter of taking this custom animation and dropping it on and setting your end frame and keyframe as we demonstrated before. This next example is just to show you how to speed things up. As you can tell, here's the original one we just did on the left side. It's got much longer length to the sh shapes and animations on here, and it's much shorter here. So let's play this, the faster version. So you see how that's much tighter and faster. So all we did to, to manage that was actually multi-select the animation points so that they would have moved together and then click on the endpoint of the farthest out one and then we can just play with the length. It's that easy. So you can finesse with that. As you can see, we ended up shortening them. And then after you shorten them, you could also trim back the length uh, overall here if you wanted on the uh, actual shapes. I really like this next example and it's a simple extension to what we've already got. And that is, I put in what I'll call a reverse reversal of the transition that we already have. So let's just play it to get a feel for how that is. So do you see how cool that was? So it's kind of like a, an open and a close effect, but the close effect is reversing the, uh, the white tr uh, transition to go, to go back to where it started. And to do that, we just added an animation which was, which is the same one in each case. And that's called the restore animation, which you get up here. And then we just put it on the timeline and put it to where we want, wanted it. So what does the restore animation do? Well, let's just zoom out and show you. So as you can see here in the original, where we start out, the keyframes are all here and all the rectangles are sitting here at the start. And then at the end, we know that all the, all the, all the keyframes are sitting at the end of the animation path. Well, when you utilize the restore animation, which we've done in these three spots here, what it does is it will restore the position, the keyframe to, to, to go back to where it was at the beginning of the previous animation. So as we know, that was here right at the beginning. So consequently, if we go now to the end, we'll see the restore result is having all the transitions back. So it plays the animation backwards. How cool is that? Just a great feature. And what the last part I want you to see in looking at things here, I have three different text elements here. One just before we go into the first um, transition wipe. And then as we come out the other side, you notice the text is different saying here. So we can put something in the middle, example, an image, a slide or motion background. And then when we come to the last swipe and it goes back, we can see here that this, that we just saw our transition wipe out or the, the closing transition, which was a reversal from right to left. Now that the cool thing is you can see the text starts at different points. So why did we end the text here precisely? So if you look here, as I'm going frame by frame, that when I get to the end of this first text piece, you notice there's full coverage on the screen. So this is really the safe transition point to change what's in the background because we have this transition overlaying the text, okay? And so that the text overlaying in the sense that it's a, it's a, a reveal in the, in the true sense. That's what I meant to say, a reveal. And now you can see as we come out the other side, see how the text is being revealed as it goes by? It's a different set of text. Likewise, when we get towards the end here of the next set of text, as we, uh, as you can see, the transitions coming back, covering it over, which is like a reverse reveal. And then the new text started in here. Okay. 
as a reveal. Cool. The next point here is I just want to share with you that now that we have this reversal point here, we can actually add this to our library. So what I actually did was cut out this gap area that you see that I've already removed in, in here in this area. And now we have just this reversal piece. So I'm going to add that to my library and click add to library. And I'm going to call it wipe transition reversal and click OK. It's going into my branded asset library and we'll just add it back to the transition folder. So now you see the what the original wipe transition here and the wipe transition reversal and we can just see it play. There you go. And here's the original. In this next example, we just have a background now in between the start transition and the end transition bracket. So if we play that, you'll see what I mean. See a nice transition background fade in and then it fades out. So how did we do that? So as you can see here, we scroll through, it goes to gray, and then it, it reverses out like normal before. So the way that's ultimately handled is first off, we have our text at the top, okay? Text and logo at the top because it's just used as a fade in and we have these transitions in here to do the fade ins. But if you look here, and I'm going to zoom out, because it's the gray block, notice that as compared to something like the, um, the, the white piece or the blue, okay, the gray uses the full extension shape. So in essence, what we did there was we just extended the, sh the uh, structure to exist to stay fully covering the, um, the visible canvas area. And then that stays in place through to the end after the text fades out. And then the reversal automatically brings everything back to the beginning. This next example I'm calling the transition background reveal. There's just one subtle difference. Let me play it and show you. See how the transition background reveal is in there? Now, what does it mean reveal? So let's see. See how the text there is revealed a bit at a time. And then when it when the reversal comes out, you can see that the the transition will overlay it a bit at a time rather than it be a fade in and fade out like the last one was done. And that's achieved just by moving the layer of the gray shape down to the bottom and leaving it as the extended structure out that we had. Now here's the motion background example. So the cool thing to notice here is just a couple of things. As the transition goes across, notice that the text down here that comes on with the motion background, they're all layers below and don't start until the screen is fully covered with the transition because then we're going to reveal the background as it comes in and we have the nice pixelated test called earthly energy. And then as that fades out and then once the transition it gets to a point that it's all covered, we can then have the text stop. This next example is like a slide reveal. Let's check it out. Notice how it does a reveal in and out. And the cool thing to notice here is that there's no dealing with the gray shape here and extending out the shape. We don't have to do deal with that. We're just leaving things as they were in the original animation. But now below that we have the text and the shape for the slide and just our logo and it has the nice reveal in and reverse reveal in terms of the closure wow as you can see getting creative with transitions is endless be sure that you remember to create library assets for your cool creations so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel if you need any assistance with learning Camtasia or getting your Camtasia project work done or with editing or producing your videos to get your message out, be sure to reach out to me through Messenger or my website, gordeisman.com, and let's have a chat. See you in another video soon.